Hey y'all, it's Ben with Whitetail Hollow Farm. This is part two of our wagon rebuild here. And my welder gave up on me, I guess. I don't really know what happened there. He was supposed to come out to the house and weld on this wagon and weld on a couple of gates for us, a trailer, do a bunch of work. And he has been telling me the past three to four weeks that his truck has been broken down. And I haven't really been able to get him to come out here. So I haven't been able to find another mobile welder. What we're gonna do is take this bent bracket off and the bent reach pole and I'm gonna take them to a welding shop that's in town that I don't know if they do mobile welding or not but I'm just gonna take this stuff up there in the bed of the truck and see if maybe they can just fix it there in their shop and I'm hoping that would be a little bit cheaper than a, uh, a mobile welding job and I know somebody's gonna have a cow about me using a chrome bit on this Figure I can beat at it with a wrench and it'll be quicker than going inside and getting a hammer. So with the power of the impact wrench, I was able to get uh, these four bolts out of the middle reach pull. We're gonna leave these three brackets on. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not bent up. They're not destroyed in any way, so they get to stay. But that one came off so that it can go to the welding shop. Now I just need to remove these four carriage bolts here. And I don't know how easy the reach pull is gonna come apart. I think I've had it apart once before just to look at it and see how it all worked and yes i am wearing the appropriate footwear for this job can't go wrong with a pair of crocs all right so i think i'm going to try and pull it apart now while i've at least got two of the bolts out that way those ones will kind of hold that end up there i just went back and looked to see how i had to do this last time i had to get the truck hooked up to the other end of it and a tractor or something else on this end and pull it apart because it's so stiff up in that pole okay so i need you on the four wheeler to do is press the gas a little bit when i get back here and hold it all right Is this redneckified enough for you? So we've got the truck with a rope hooked up to the back of the wagon and with the four wheeler we're gonna hopefully pull the reach pipe right out. I think this is what I had to do last time I tried to take it apart. It worked! It's a little bit rusted up and stiff in there. Now I gotta get the other side out. So we're gonna pull the bolts out of this side and it's pretty loose in there. So I think this side might just pull right out with some manpower. Hi. There's our wagon pulled apart after a little bit of brute force and that reach pole really isn't that long it's uh only about six foot or so because that's about how long the bed of my truck is and like i was telling mom a second ago there's an inner pole inside of this one so it's heavy and it's uh probably gonna be a bit of money to fix it if they can't get or to get a new one if they can't uh, get the bend out of this one. hey y'all it is a lovely evening here i think it's a wednesday yeah wednesday evening here on the farm i'm in our little compact tractor and just got the forks and we got a spectator over here Bonnie's coming to check me out see what I'm doing just swapping between the hay spear right there and the pallet fork because between the last time that y'all saw me and now 
I was able to get the reach pole on the wagon to a welding shop as well as the bent up bracket that I showed y'all. But the axles are both sitting at the house and I'd like to get started working on them. So I am going to move them with the pallet forks, just set the forks up under the axles and pick them up and uh, move them up under the lights up at the North Farm that we manage. So I can work on them a little bit up there tonight, hopefully. So there's our two axles. That's the front axle and that's the rear one. We're gonna move the rear first because that's a lot easier for me to move on my own and nobody else is here to help me at the moment. Maybe Simon could help me. Hi, what are you doing? Hi, Simon. What are you doing, old man? Hi. Simon's our German Shepherd. He is a little bit over 10 now and still kicking. And he's a good boy. Yeah, what are you doing? It's a good boy. All right, I'm going to set the camera up and see if I can't roll this on top of that. I think it's time to mow the lawn. Well, we'll see how that worked. Well, that worked about how I figured it would. So that's a good thing. Pretty easy way to move these. This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging with the drawbar on it and the steering linkage, but shouldn't be too difficult. It got dark fast tonight. We're moving the front axle now, just buttoned down the road at about five because I just saw a fawn on the side of the road a minute ago and she didn't really know where to go. I think I filmed some on my phone but didn't think to grab the GoPro, but I don't want her running out in front of me and getting her hurt. So we're just putting along at five. That and our road is a mess. So it's a little bumpy out here. I don't want to lose this thing. We'll get there when we get there. Plenty of spectators out here next to the barn tonight, but hopefully this gives you all an idea of why I work up here at night. So there's usually a lot more light than this. I don't know if y'all can tell, but there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bulbs that are out and only about five that are working. And it is extremely bright under there with just the five. So we got to get out there and replace all the other ones that have gone out, but it is very, very bright and easy to work up here at night and much cooler at night. It's not 90 degrees like it is during the day. So I'm gonna kind of maneuver myself here around the other tractor and tether that needs to be worked on. And uh, we'll set the gear right down where we need it. I gotta get out here and see what this thing's trying to do. Make sure that it doesn't uh, go the wrong way. It's got a lot of weight here on the front with the drawbar, so it needs to be kind of tilted back. Well, that's unfortunate. I got the uh, 
set of wagon gear off but uh i don't know if y'all saw it the light started flickering and then i saw the panel over here flashing and when i pressed the button i knew y'all can't see it because it's so dark nothing happened this happened to me about oh probably two weeks ago when i was building the stanchion over here I ended up just having to get some portable lights out i don't know what causes this but uh you come back a day or two later and all the lights appear to be working again so there's no switches inside or anything like that to uh control these lights so i'm not really sure what to do press the button and it don't do nothing so i guess that's a conclusion for tonight already because i don't feel like getting portable lights out but hey we got the wagon gear moved to where it needs to be so that we can start working on it so with a little bit of light from the shop here just want to thank everybody for uh so with a little light from the shop here i guess i'll see y'all when i have uh light again so i can work on this thing let's hope the lights don't decide to go off on me tonight it's almost nine o'clock tonight i just got done on another project i've been working on pretty much all day this is a cattle stanchion behind me that we're going to use to breed our cows this so we're going to use to breed our cows this fall and also milk so this is actually based off of justin rhodes design from the abundant permaculture program that he runs i had to make a lot of modifications to it because the plans weren't precise but i'm not going to focus on this project in this video this is a totally different deal i just was showing y'all what i've been working on i was just putting some finishing touches on it i actually just finished staining it with a sealer so we're going to try and preserve some of this wood for a while and hopefully it don't rot out overnight this is my first time applying a sealer to anything so we'll see how i did and how well it holds up i think i got pretty much everything covered but uh it needs to dry for a little bit it actually i think i put a little bit too much on in a couple of places the wood's kind of a whitish tint in a couple of spots but that's all right it'll wash off in the rain but that's another video i'm going to cover this and i plan on building a couple more of these actually so let's get to tonight's focus we got both the axles in here now so i'm going to pull the wheels off of these axles and i'd like to try and wire wheel them down sand them out and put some paint on them tonight We'll deal with the axles in the next video, but we'll get the wheels taken care of in this video, hopefully. I soaked all these lug nuts in uh, PB Blaster earlier, so we'll see how easy they decide to come off. Hopefully I don't mess up one of these chrome sockets because I don't have the big impact sockets with me tonight. Well, the first one came off pretty easy, except it is really messed up. That's not good. That bolt is screwed. So is this one. I'm wondering if these are supposed to be like this for one reason or another. Huh. Yeah, so far all of these look exactly the same. So I'm wondering if they're supposed to look like this. That's strange. got to do that three more times i'm also going to get in here and do these wheel bearings at some point that's going to get done during this restoration project i don't know if it's a priority right tonight i did order a bearing packer i know you can do it by hand done it by hand it's not all that fun so i'm gonna do it with a handy dandy tool think smarter not harder right time to repeat this process three more times Well, we got two tires off. I'm gonna quick run to the house, get some more GoPro batteries, and then we'll come back here and probably start on those two. I don't know if we're gonna get to those two tonight, but maybe, we'll see. Well, I didn't get anything done last night, as per expected. Just went home, had dinner, and uh, wrapped it up for the night. Here we are today, though. I got all four wheels off the wagon, and sorta got the front running gear propped up. Gotta work on that a little bit more, but we're not gonna focus on that too much in this video. We're gonna get started wire wheeling these down, and then we'll 
sand what we can of them get them nice and cleaned up and maybe hit them with some primer and got some yellow paint there in that jar and i gotta go get the sprayer at some point today and get these painted my wheel bearing packer will be here today so we might maybe touch the wheel bearings we'll see no hating on the pink safety glasses y'all no hating totally forgot mine today so i'm borrowing mom since i have her cart do they make me look cuter Well, here's one tire done. It is ready to be primed now. Got it all shined up and all the big ripples out of it for the most part. There's the very, very occasional lump and bump in here. Otherwise, it is very, very smooth and fairly good to me. I think it's ready to be painted. Now, just to repeat the process on these other three tires, I'm just hitting it with the wire wheel first, and then I'm hitting it with my little multi-tool sander afterward and knocking the heavy stuff out. All right, we got one tire ready to paint. I know I sound like Darth Vader right now. I just got my respirator on. Never worn a respirator to paint in the past, but I figured I probably should start because it's probably not great to be breathing in all that stuff. And I figured this might protect me. I'm not a big fan of masks, so. We'll see how well it works. Just got a simple rattle can of primer. We're not gonna use the big spray gun for that. We will put the actual paint on with a big spray gun. I don't really care if these tires get anything on them. I don't know why I even bothered to really put any tape around them. They're gonna get replaced. If you saw the last video, I got brand new tires for this thing. And these ones will never be used again. They're just gonna go in the garbage. So let's get to painting this thing. I'm probably only gonna get this one painted before my battery dies. And then I'm gonna go home, get new batteries and get something eat.
even with just a little bit of primer, I'd say this thing looks a lot better. But it'll be nice and yellow by the time we're done. Time to hit the other side. one tire down now we got to do this three more times but i'm gonna go get lunch first so i made the executive decision that i am not gonna waste time putting tape all the way around it and wasting tape because the tires are just gonna go to the dump anyways i don't know why i wasted all that time doing the last we're not gonna do that on the rest of them and i had tacos for lunch if anybody was wondering if i wasn't working for the railroad or farming i might become a chef a taco chef i think i'd be pretty good at that probably not the only thing i can make but but i do like some venison tacos I'm still taping up around the valve stems because they all seem to be good, so why not reuse them? Alright, time to time lapse. Well, we got four tires that are primed and ready to go, ready for some of this yellow paint right here. Just gotta stir it up. I got the sprayer right there, and we will spray them down in a nice coat of yellow. I've used this sprayer once for staining the stanchion the other night, and wasn't super impressed, but I think a lot of it was operator error. So we'll see if it does any better with actual paint and not just stain and uh, it, see if I can get it dialed in a little bit better. I got most of the ripples and garbage out of these tires, but there's quite a few spots that just no matter how much sanding I did and wire wheeling I did, it, they just wouldn't come out. Just some bad ripples. This is the only wheel that looks really rough. This one actually looks fairly decent. That one over there looks the best of the four. I'm sure once you get some yellow paint on them though, it'll be hard to tell where ripples are and where they aren't. What do you think? Am I ready to spray some paint? Huh? Am I ready to spray some paint? Do I look okay? You need some pink glasses on. Oh. Yeah, I gotta put the pink glasses on too. He's out here Nobody shooting. Nobody can hear what you're saying. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I could. Here. Just set the can of paint next to where you yeah, want it. You know, and I'll take care of it, okay? No. And saying, just hey set guys, the can of paint really down next to whatever you want painted and I'll paint it. No, I don't think so. I'll paint it for you. No. Be real quick. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to look as nice of a finish as I'm going to do. So I got the earmuffs on because he's going to be shooting right here next to me. And I got a paint so I got the respirator on so I look goofy right now. But I don't want my ears blown out by the end of this. And I also don't want to take in a bunch of toxic chemicals so oh, i look really goofy again today you gonna take a picture of me it's already on camera here you let me know before you start shooting and then i'll put them on
Well, here we go, y'all. There is the first coat on these wheels. I'd say it's not awful looking for a first coat. And it'll look a lot better when there's tires that don't have overspray on them. So I'm really excited about getting those tires on it. Getting them cleaned up even though they're going to get dirtied out here working on the farm. I'm fairly impressed with the sprayer. I finally got it working the way that I want it to. I had to adjust tips on it and uh, do a couple other minor things. But definitely going to have to do some touch up. Like right here you can tell it's, it's pretty thin. So this is just a first base coat. And uh, we'll come back through with a second and third and make sure that it looks good. And then we'll put some clear coat on it to preserve it. And we'll see how it turns out. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching everybody. If you're interested to see how this thing turns out, stick around for part three. In part three, we're definitely going to be working on the actual axles for the running gear. The main goal in part three is to try and get it repainted. So just like we did in this video with the tires, we're gonna do the same thing with the axles. Wire wheel it all down, put some sandpaper on it, and then we'll get it painted. Thanks again for watching everybody. If you wanna see intermediate pictures, be sure to check out our Facebook page, Whitetail Hollow Farms. I've been uploading pictures of the project there as I progress. And of course, the whole video is gonna be here on YouTube. So check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to uh, like this video and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.